Hi, I'm Will Hesketh and this is Functional Yoga. So as always, just remember to make some space, make time so that you can really be present, which means removing distractions, uh, be as playful as you can, be as grateful as you can and be as compassionate as you can towards yourself. And just remember, you're amazing. You don't have to do anything. You are just amazing. This week's session is all about the legs. As always, it's gonna be a bit of everything, but we're just gonna be focusing on the legs. So the earlier class released this week was all about getting the legs moving and working and warming them up. I would suggest doing that directly before doing this class or something else so that your muscles are warm and they're ready to move. If they're all uh, cold, then they're gonna be even stiffer and tighter. So you want to get things warm before you come onto this class. So we're gonna start on our backs. Bring yourself around whenever you're ready. And just very gently allow the knees to come into the chest and hold them in. If that in itself feels like a tricky position to be in, then you are more than likely a little bit tight in your glutes. They may be used to being in a shortened position and when you pull it into a lengthened position, your body just goes, oh, we're not going there. So you need to persuade them to come in gently. So what you could do is put a strap around your knees. You could rest your feet on something and then gradually move towards whatever that thing is. So it could be a wall and you gradually move towards as you start to push in gently. And eventually you might get to a point where you can hold the knees. If you can hold the knees, then just hold them and just enjoy that. If you want to have a rock side to side or a rock front to back, you could do that. And then we're just going to very gently and slowly rest that left leg down. Try and stay as mindful as possible. So just trying to be with each breath as it happens and feel your way through the movements as you go. So from here, put both hands onto your hamstrings. So that's back of the right thigh and then just feel like you could give it a little bit of a massage with the hands and then just see where you can straighten your leg out to. So just nice and gently straightening the leg out gradually. Now, normal range of movement for the hamstring is if you were flat on your back and this bottom leg was straight out, normal range of movement is straight up at 90 degrees with this leg. So. I'm just about there. I'm not too far ahead of it. I'm starting to get quite a big stretch if I pull into it. I don't feel any need to go past that personally. So if you're a gymnast and you need that or whatever it is that you need, a dancer or anything like that, then fair enough. But if not, maybe just ask yourself, why do I feel the need to stretch my hamstring further than it needs to be? Running the risk of stretching the tendon as opposed to the actual muscle. If you're feeling tight in this and maybe you're only getting to here and you've got to have this leg bent, then that's fine. Just gently bend and straighten and glide. And each time you do it, you're getting your body more and more used to going into that position. And very slowly and gently, we're gonna change legs. Same thing on the side, place the foot down, change legs. Hands onto the hamstring, feel it, warm it with the hands, let it feel calm very gently straightening that leg out a little and bending it a little. Remember you can have the bottom leg straight if you want or you can have it bent. The idea is that you feel calm and relaxed as you're doing it and that muscle just starts to ease and lengthen. See if you could really start to lengthen your exhale breaths out and just see what's happened in your upper body, in your face, in your neck, in your shoulders. Keep that back of the neck nice and long, so shuffle around, let that upper back flatten out a little, and relax the face, the jaw, the cheeks, all around the eyes, just really starting to allow yourself to settle into a gentle gliding lengthen of the hamstrings. Whenever you're ready, gradually bringing both knees into the chest again, holding them in if you can do, or resting the feet on something if you need to, if those glutes are tight. Just have a little rock side to side and a little rock front to back if that feels nice. 
Okay, so from here, we're going to try similar action. So take hold of the hamstrings, but one hand on each hamstring now. And then see if you could part the knees a little bit and just feel the gentle stretch on the insides of the thighs. As you part those legs out, try not to go so far that you feel any discomfort into the groin and into the actual hip joint itself. Just take it as far as feels comfortable. And then you could gently straighten the legs out a little and bend them and feel your way through that. You could reach up and take hold of the shins or the calves and just gently bend the straight in there. You could push out gently on the insides of the thighs so then we're externally rotating a little and bringing the feet together a little bit. You could reach through and take hand of the outside of the foot. Quite extreme that one, so take your time, don't force it, and you can bend and straighten and just play around. The thing to watch out for this one is if you're doing this and it's starting to pull your pelvis around and your lower back is starting to feel a bit uncomfortable, you've definitely gone too far. So just take your time and just see how it feels. You could start to circle the legs uh, in opposite directions. So one leg goes clockwise, one leg goes counterclockwise. So the legs come wide. Try and use the arms to move the legs. Really relax the legs as much as you can and just feel the muscles that feel tense. As before, try not to feel um, discomfort in the joints. If you do, just back it off. We're trying to feel for the big muscles, getting that nice, relaxing, nourishing movement. We're not feeling for intense stretches that feel like they're at the ends of the muscles. Just trying to get the big, movable, easily repairable bit of the muscle lengthening out. Whenever you're ready, try same thing opposite direction with those circles, or just experiment with something that feels nice for you. Don't force it, but just make sure that it feels good for you. If you've got your own ideas of things that you wanna do, then that's all good. This is just nourishing, gentle movement. We're gonna have a little start now. Then we're gonna have a little play around with internal and external rotation. So just bring your right knee in, keep your left foot placed on the floor, keep a little bit of bend in that right knee, and then just very gently externally rotate that right thigh bone, and then very gently internally rotate that right thigh bone. So you're just feeling your way through the rotation internal and external so you can use your hands to assist or you can just do the the leg on its own move the leg about as much as you need to but just try and feel your way into as much internal rotation and external rotation make sure there's no pinching in the groin or the hip remember we're just getting our way through feeling our way into that hip joint noticing the muscles that are creating that action and the muscles that are in inhibiting those actions. Same thing over side, whenever you're ready, just gently rotate in one way, rotate in the other way, feel any way through. Kind of like your shin is a windscreen wiper. As you can see, I've got not all that much internal rotation. A lot of people don't have that much internal rotation. We don't need that much, but I've got a little bit below average. So it's something I'll work on, but it's quite a difficult thing to stretch. Don't worry about anything, just be with it. Notice it, enjoy it. Nourishing movement at the hip. Okay, and whenever you're ready, relax, rest the foot down. Now the right leg comes in, we externally rotate to the point where we can rest the heel just on the knee there. So it's ideally we want to be just above the ankle, resting just above the left knee. So you're in this sort of figure four position. 
if you feel that you can't quite get that leg up here, your glutes are tight, straighten the other leg out, make it a bit easier for yourself so it's a bit more mellow. And then just gently bring the knee in and take it out a few times. And as you bring the knee in and take it out a few times, you might step that foot in a bit further and you might feel a bit of stretch around the outside of that glute. Depends on how tight your glutes are. If you're not feeling any stretch on that glute, you may want to lift that left foot off the floor. You might take hold of the thigh or the shin, or you might just use your abdominal muscles to keep that lift. I like to do it with the abs, just gently lifting into it, feeling your way into it. And what you could also do is bring it in and back it off and then unwind for a minute and change legs to the other side. But just see how it feels for you. So if you're wanting to stick on one side, that's fine. Just make sure you're not going dead into the groin, you're not getting that compression into the hip socket, and that it feels like a really nice mellow stretch and the breath is long and smooth. And you change uh, whenever you feel that you want to move on to the other side to even up. I'm gonna change each time and do it roughly the same amount of time on each side. Experiment with a little bit of movement. Notice the breath feeling my way into it. I know that my left hip is a bit tighter and more restricted than my right, so I'm just trying to get a few little gentle nourishing movements in to make things feel comfortable around the groin and the hip to allow me to get actual external rotation instead of like kind of a compression. And I'm gonna change legs again. And then I'm gonna change again, but obviously do your own thing if you want to. Let's just go for a few more breaths. So I'm gonna go for a few more breaths each leg. Gradually evening up on the other leg if you need to. And rest the feet down. Take a moment. Bring the knees into the chest whenever you're ready. Again, if you can't bring them into the chest, just rest the legs on something just so that you're gently lengthening into the glute muscles. Again, you could use a strap around the feet or around the knees just to hold in whatever feels right for you. And then if you feel comfortable to, you could roll through the spine. If you prefer to just rest where you are, then that's completely fine. If you feel really nice and mobile, and uh, you've got the strength in the abdominal muscles to roll through the spine without thudding forwards and backwards, keeping that control, then maybe you might do that. You might roll through forwards and backwards, feeling your way into it. Got a creaky, bit of floor that I'm rolling over here. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic, hopefully not. Probably, it's quite loud. <laughs> but for me, that's feeling great. If it's not feeling good for you, don't do it. And then we're gonna start to work to all fours. So you can either bring yourself around slowly in a way that feels comfortable for you, or if you want a bit of a challenge and you wanna test your range of movement, you could see if you could roll to this sort of squat position jump the legs back or step the legs back and bring yourself to all fours. From there, we set the toes behind, knees hip width, feet hip width, spread the toes as wide as you can and just gently ease your way back as you glide back. So exhale as you go. Try a couple with the top of the foot down, see how that is. Again, see if you could spread the toes nice and wide. Change the feet as often as you want to. Change the feet as often as you want to. Keep 
change the feet as often as you want to. Keep that breath nice and smooth and long. We'll start to come onto an adductor stretch, so inside of the thigh muscle. We're going to go from a kneeling position and step a foot out to the side, so it doesn't really matter which. You could mirror me, so you could do the left foot if you want to, to make it easier to follow. And we're going to see if instead of sort of coming over here and coming onto the inside of this knee, if you could keep the foot out and then shift the hips over. So then you can allow yourself to come on the inside of that foot and let the right side of it lift so that you're not rolling over on that ankle. So you can just be nice and comfortable there. You can put that foot on a cushion or a pillow. And then what we're trying to do is keep these hips stacked on top of each other on this side. From here, hands come down. And it's that same action we've just done. Gently gliding backwards and gliding forwards. Just feeling your way through the inside of the leg. <clears throat> I'm just going to shift back a bit so you can see and then maybe you might come all the way forwards and gently drop the hips towards the floor. Make sure you don't arch the back as you do that though. Make sure it feels really nice and comfortable, no discomfort on the knee. Just a very subtle stretch on the inside of that right thigh. Make sure it feels like it's right in the middle of that thigh, not down near the knee or not up near the groin. Keep it really nice and mellow. Readjust the foot position, bend the knee a little if you need to. Just feeling your way through. Maybe experiment a little with thigh bone rotation. So if you let your knee face up towards the ceiling, it comes more towards the hamstring side of the adductors. And then if you shift your heel out, it comes more towards the inside of those adductors. Just gliding through. Whenever you're ready, change in side. Same thing, leg goes out to the other side. We keep the hip over the knee as best we can. And then we gently glide through. Feeling your way through the inside of that leg. Long, smooth breaths. Readjusting that foot position as you need to. Feeling your way into it. So for me, I'm starting to feel a little bit around here, around the outside of this hip. I seem to have a little bit of sort of impingement on this hip or whatever you want to call it. Gliding through, keeping those breaths nice and smooth. Again, change the foot position as much as you want to to feel your way through. So you might start to feel, oh, if I turn my knee up towards the ceiling, I feel a stretch. Whereas I don't if I'm around with the knee facing forwards or vice versa, whatever it is. You might creep the foot a little further away, but try and keep the hips over the knee on the other side. And again, you can go all the way forwards towards the floor as well. Just make sure it's feeling natural and comfortable and the stretch is in the big bits of the muscles, not up near the joints. So it's nice, safe lengthening of muscles, not a uh, pulling into tendons or into the joint capsule, just nice and mellow. Whenever you're ready, gradually walking that leg back in, bringing yourself back to that kneeling position. Now we're going to do soleus, which is up the back of the, the lower leg here, but it's with a bent leg, not a straight leg. So it's not a calf, it's a soleus, it's a similar, similar area of muscle. We're going to step the right leg forwards and just put the toes on the floor, almost like you're in a, a starting position to go for a run. And then very gently allow your chest to rest down on your thigh bone 
and then push your heel back towards the floor. Now this can be tricky for some people, particularly if you're feeling discomfort into the foot. So really try, readjust the foot position, wiggle the toes, get as active as you can into that foot and really just feel your way when you've got into a position where you've got no pain in the foot or on the front of the ankle or even around the back of the ankle and then you're just feeling the stretch up here on the back of the calf area. So readjust, my foot might move backwards, foot might move forwards. Gently finding your way into that stretch. So for me, I've got quite a lot of length in this muscle. So you might be a bit further back here and that's completely fine and probably more uh, normal and natural. I think I don't really need to stretch this area and trying to keep strong work into the foot, wiggling the toes, getting everything working as I'm doing it. So it's not, all, it's not just a stretch. We need to find our way into the intricate little activations of muscles that allow us to feel the most beneficial stretch. Whenever you're ready, we're gonna change legs, take your time, hold it for a bit longer if you want to. You can always pause the video for any of these stretches. Same thing other side, so that left leg steps forward now, give the toes a good wiggle, find a position that works for you, and ease your way back, pushing your chest forwards, and we're gonna do it, but the mic go, might go a bit funny, so bear with me. So as you push your chest forwards into that leg, the heel pushes back towards the floor. And again, make sure you feel comfortable around the foot and the ankle. If it doesn't stop, take a break, do something else, like something else that we've done maybe, or something else gentle, like resting on your back, or resting on your front. Long, smooth, calm exhales, talking to the muscles, telling them that it's okay for them to relax. So you can have the heel a little bit lifted, or you can have the heel down on the floor as you're doing those. Whenever you're ready, bring it back to your kneeling position and come up to a high kneel. From your high kneeling position, step your right leg forwards and gently level your hips off. Push into the front leg to level the hips off as much as possible. Check where this back foot is, make sure it's not wandered around. Keep it in line with the knee and the hip. From here, we gently tuck the pelvis backwards as you tuck that pelvis backwards, you should start to feel a little bit of lengthening into the front of this hip here. Breathing through it gently and calmly. Take your time. Finding a good, comfortable position. Really trying to keep those hips in line with each other. So that's in that sort of twist sense, side to side or front to back with each hip. So bringing them in line with each other that way, but also up and down as well. So trying to keep them level that way. So I'll show you from the front on. So the tendency is just to sort of hang over a bit, collapse a bit into this front groin here like this. So we want to push into that front leg, level the hips up and then tuck that pelvis. Lots of uh, work into that front leg, unfortunately, and gentle stretch into that back leg. Long exhales again. Whenever you're ready, change in legs. So, left leg comes forward, right leg stays where it is. Level those hips up, tuck that pelvis, and hold that gentle stretch up. Keep those hips as level as you can. So there's no need to sort of come into this or arch the back or reach the arms up or any of that fancy stuff. All we wanna be doing is getting a tuck here and lengthening in here. Normal range of movement for this hip extension again is 15 to 20 degrees. So really, I'm pretty much there at this point here. Then if I tuck the pelvis, I feel quite a strong stretch and I know just need a little bit of extra length in those hip flexors, nothing major. Feeling my way into it, making sure it feels like it's in the nice big bits of the muscle, not anything small or twangy or uncomfortable. Big long exhales. 
talking to those muscles. Checking that back foot position, remember the ankle hip alignment on both legs. And again, if you wanna keep the stretches on for longer, then by all means, just pause the video. Gradually release whenever you're ready. I'm gonna come down onto our fronts. We're gonna do a classic quad stretch. Nothing fancy about this one, but it's useful. So, apologies if the mic goes a bit funny. You could just rest down onto the floor. You could even have a cushion just to rest the head on. And then bend the uh, A leg, doesn't matter which, as much as you can. And then reach round and either take a strap and wrap it round your foot so that you can pull in, or if you can actually reach it, then just grab hold of it. Now check that your knee hasn't winged out to the side or come inwards and the foot wings out to the side. Check that knee ankle hip alignment. So normal range of movement again is for the heel to just reach the bum. Don't worry if you're away off that, it's completely normal. Knees hip width apart, feet hip width apart, trying to keep that alignment, just breathing gently into it. And if you want to intensify the stretch a little bit, you push the hips into the floor. If you find that your heel is well touching the bum, and when you push the hips into the floor, you're not even feeling much more of a stretch, then your quad is long enough to do everything it needs to do. Breathing into it. Just allowing it to soften off, lengthening those exhales. Again, if this is feeling like an area that needs a stretch, pause the video, hold it on for longer. Same thing on the other leg, whenever you're ready, gently bending the leg in. I would suggest turning the head to the other side. Again, checking the knee ankle hip alignment, working on that alignment. Pushing those hips into the floor. Lengthening those exhales. Allowing those quads to lengthen. And again, if it feels like an area you need to stretch, then pause the video and st stick with it for longer. Something to bear in mind as well when you come out is try not to just let go of the foot and twang the leg away. See if you can actually control it and go, right, okay, now this muscle lengthens a bit more. You can use the hamstring and I can hold myself here as I let go and the leg doesn't twang away when I let go of it. Gradually bring your way up to a standing position whenever you're ready, take your time. And I'm just gonna do a little bit for the hamstring and the calf. You can kind of do them together, but let's see where we get to. So step the right leg forward and the left leg back. Start small to, to be, uh, just to be safe and see how we get on. Level your hips out. So remember, front and back of the hips, or like a twist of the hips, front and back, level it out. Hips in line with each other. Up and down, level it out. Hips in line with each other. Abdominal muscles engaged, hinge forwards from the pelvis, not the back. So it's not a round forwards of the back. That doesn't stretch the hamstring. Hinge forwards, the hamstring attaches on the back of the pelvis area. As you hinge forwards, the hamstring lengthens out. Bend the front knee a little bit and hinge forwards as far as you can. And hopefully you should start to feel a stretch on the back of that right hamstring there. Now, keep the back heel on the floor as you do it and you might start to feel a little bit on the back calf as well. Particularly if you straighten that back leg out. So it's calf if the leg is straight, it's soleus if the leg is bent. So if you straighten the leg out, we're doing calf and hamstring as we hinge forward. If you just wanna concentrate on the hamstring, just do whatever you want to with that back leg. You might lift the heel to make it easier and then you might just gently lift and lower into that hamstring. But make sure again, you're hinging from the pelvis, not rounding from the back. That's how we lengthen the hamstring, not just round into the back and don't really get any movement in the hamstring. So if we do all of our movements from our back, we end up getting uh, an overworked back and a hamstring that doesn't really do anything. So that's what we're trying to do here is hinge and lengthen that hamstring. Holding wherever feels comfortable for you, just gently allowing it to lengthen, giving those toes a wiggle regularly. 
And remember, you can straighten that back leg out as well. So then we start to come into this uh, slightly more classic yoga position, really. You maybe step a little bit deeper. Just be careful. Make sure you don't lock that front knee out. Make sure you don't hyperextend at the joints. So Pashimottanasana, I think this one is called, traditionally. And you would maybe have reverse prayer of the hands behind your back, but I would suggest just having your hands on your lower back so you can feel, are you rounding it or are you keeping it nice and gently curved? Make sure you feel it in the hamstring, not up here where the hamstring attaches to the glute. So for me, I need to bend my knee more to feel it in the hamstring, not the glute, or the attachment point of the hamstring. Whenever you're ready, we're gonna change legs, take it nice and steady. Hinging forwards again from the pelvis, hips stay level. Gently bending and straightening that front leg, feeling your way into that hamstring. Gently lifting and lowering that back heel, feeling your way into the calf. So you might get to a point where both legs are nearly locked, but they're not quite locked. And you're hinging forwards from there, keeping those hips central and aligned. You might even have something to hold on to. You might have the wall in front of you and just rest your fingertips on there. And just try and feel your way in there to the hamstring and the calf. Long exhales, controlling your way through that movement. And again, if you feel like it's the stretch you need, then pause the video, do it for a bit longer. One more for the hamstrings. This is a really good one to see what your range of movement of your hamstrings is like. So if you straighten your legs out in front of you, you'll probably find that you sit in a bit of a slouched position if your hamstrings are tall, uh, short, because it pulls your pelvis backwards and then you need to sort of round the back to make that happen, So or to be set up. So you can use the hands behind you and then just walk them in a little bit and then just say, could you straighten the arms out a little bit and just very gently allow this round of the lower back. So you see how the lower back is rounded here. You can put your hand on the lower back as you feel it. See if you could flatten that lower back out, tilt that pelvis until you're in an upright position. So if you can get to the point where you're sat up tall here and the pelvis is fairly neutral, then you've got that 90 degree angle at the hip, which means that your hamstrings are within the norms of range of movement. If you're used to traditional yoga classes and you're gonna reach and grab hold of the hands and pull yourself right forwards into that stretch position, just be aware, a lot of the time you're gonna be stretching up into your tendons that attach to the back of your pelvis, not your actual hamstrings. So then if you're lengthening your tendons, personally, I don't think that's very helpful. So just seeing if you could maintain a normal range of movement, unless you have a reason to go past that, then what's the point? Breathing into it. So if you're tight in your hamstrings, you're gonna be absolutely finding this really tricky. So you might use the fingers behind you to support yourself. This is the one to let the hamstrings lengthen over a long period of time. If you sit in this for a couple of minutes a day, that's how your hamstrings can really lengthen out. That's how I lengthened mine. I used to be here, trying for this, and I just sat like this for two minutes a day, and I got there. So long, smooth breaths, just letting those hamstrings lengthen out. And again, pause the video if you feel like this is the one for you. Maybe time yourself a couple of minutes. Finally, just bring yourself onto your back and just bring the knees into the chest, hold them in. And then if you feel like your hamstrings are the ones that are the problem, that you're tight in, you could straighten one leg out, rest the foot down and just hold that leg. And just again, just a held gentle hamstring stretch. Make sure it feels mellow. You can put a strap around the foot if you want to, to make it more mellow so you don't have to go as far with it. Make sure there's no big shakes going on. Just ease in your way in. Make sure it's that big fleshy bit of the muscle that you're lengthening, or it feels like that's the bit that you're pulling on. And see if you can relax into it and allow your body to just calmly increase the length of it. 
If you feel like it's your glute you want to be stretching, you might want to cross that leg over and bring yourself into that stretch for the glute. So you could reach through and grab hold of the back of the leg or the calf or the shin, I should say. Or you could rest that foot on a wall. That's a really nice passive one for that glute. And again, remember, you can just pause if you want to. Change in leg whenever you're ready. Same thing, either the hamstring. So again, strap around the foot if you want to. Holding on with the hand if you can. Giving the toes a wiggle regularly. Remember, keep active right through the legs. And if you want the glute, you just cross the leg over. And again, you could rest that right foot on a wall or you could reach through and hold onto it. Just feeling your way in to a gentle glute stretch. Again, make sure you feel it in the glute, not into the actual groin or the hip socket itself. And again, if you want to keep it on for longer, then pause the video, keep it on for longer. In your own time, whenever you're ready and you've done enough, bring yourself gently onto your back, straighten those legs out. If it feels uncomfortable to have those legs straight, remember you can always just bend the knees up or you can rest the legs on something, put some cushions behind the legs, anything like that. Settle in and just see how things are feeling. Notice that breath. Notice the way your body moves. Tune into how your face feels. Soften off anything that feels tense or tight unnecessarily. Just imagine letting go of tension, letting go of effort. Closing the eyes if you're happy, closing the eyes. Minimum effort to block that light out. Maybe looking up towards the middle of the forehead while the eyes are still closed. Noticing how the forehead feels, noticing how in between the eyebrows feels and around the eyes. Just imagine it all softening. Around the cheeks and the jaw, just softening off. Around the neck and the shoulders. Just experiencing the expansion of the ribs, of the lungs as you inhale, and the relaxing and letting go of the exhale. And you can start to bring that into visualization as you're inhaling, expanding, taking in new oxygen, new thoughts, new feelings, refreshing, renewing. As you exhale, just letting go, anything you don't need. Just bringing yourself back each breath. Start again, notice, pay attention. Each exhale, let go of any effort, any bad talk to yourself, any sense of not being able to do it or anything like that. It's not a case of being able to do it or not being able to do it. It's just a case of starting again with your inhale and letting go with your exhale. And as and when you're able to concentrate on the breath, that's enough. It might be half a breath might even be no breaths at all. You might be so busy in your mind. And that's fine. But we're working towards training our attention and our awareness. And that repetition is good. That noticing the mind is wandered is good.
reminding yourself. The fact that you are breathing is an amazing thing. The fact that you are alive is an amazing thing. Life in general is an amazing thing. It's easy to get wrapped up in other things, feelings of needing to succeed, etc. When really just being alive is incredible in itself. Just appreciating that. With gratitude, with compassion. Maybe with a little smile. Each breath, amazing. Incredible. Magical. Precious. But at the same time, it's gone when you let go. Moment by moment by moment. Starting again and letting go. Very gently, you might start to move the face, the hands, the toes, the feet, the fingers, whatever it is, just start really small. Gradually increasing the movement, stretching out if you want to, rolling about if you want to, just seeing how you feel, rolling onto your side if you want to, going for a snooze if that's appropriate and that's what you want to do, or bringing yourself slowly and calmly and carefully back up to a seated position, keeping the eyes closed as you do that if you want to. When you get there, letting the chin come down towards the chest slowly, sitting up nice and tall through the spine, letting the back of the neck lengthen out. Very slowly opening the eyes if you want to, and very gradually lifting the head back up if you want to. And we'll finish there. Thanks very much for joining in and take care.